Oh, ho, my hearties. There you are. A very good morning to you, Dinky Doo. It's just me, Scotty McClue, and a very, very warm welcome to our live stream this morning. Just a quick pop up to see how you're all doing, of course. A quick visit from the first lord of the internet, the world's top broadcaster, just to say hi to every single one of you. I hope you'll come and join me. And uh, you'll let me know what's happening with you, of course. Uh, keep us up to date with uh, all the different things that you're up to. Are you self-isolating? Are you having to go to work? Are you a key worker? What are you up to? Entirely up to yourself, but do spill the beans. Good morning, Scotty, says the wonderful Gordon Robertson. Fred Walton is watching. Dinky do, Fred La. Lovely to hear from you. I send you warm greetings. Now then, Derek Walker's joined us as well. Welcome, Derek. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome to our morning pop-up, Morning McClure. Greetings from Kelvin Side, says Gordon Robertson. We love Kelvin Side. I used to live overlooking the Kelvin, south-facing. How fantastic. Good morning, Scotty. Dinky do. Lots of love. Lovely to hear from you. Steve McMahon, thank you do. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Kevin Stewart and Kareem Zachariah have joined us. Good. Everybody is on their way. Spread the word. Tell Ted, tell Ted, tell Ted. Give them a reminder. Hello, Scotty. How are you today, says Kareem? Excellent, Kareem, and I hope you are as well. I send best wishes. There's Fred Walton. Dinky do to you too, Scotty McClure. He's a fine man, is Fred. You know, um, not quite so um, up to uh, speed with the politics sometimes, but a fine man. That's the thing. That's what I think. So there we are. We're all uh, we're all entitled to an opinion, aren't we, Fred? <laughs> Excellent stuff. Now, I'm just going to share to let everybody know that we are on. Otherwise, not a soul will know. There we are. Everybody's sitting in the go. Oh, I miss Scotty McClure. I never knew that was on. You say, well, there you are. You have to sharpen up. You have to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Ah, here it all is here in front of me. Now, I'm going to do quite a lot of sharing, guys. If you could do the same, that would be just wonderful. Kevin Stewart, good morning, Scotty. Dinky do. Good morning, Kevin. Willie Drysdale has joined us. Hi, Willie. Dinky do from Scotty McClure. Just let everybody know. Now, I'm just going to share to the... Um, I'll share here and then I'll share to the big page and let everybody know what is happening. Kelvin Allen's with us, dinky do Kelvin. Having to do housework with the wife, says Derek Walker. Oh, she'll be learning a few tricks from you there, Derek. Just give a, a scoosh of polish and don't bother doing any more. So oh, somebody's been polishing in here. No, I shouldn't tell you all that. How's the week off, Scotty? Well, um, I've had, I haven't quite had a week off, um, but tomorrow, well, no, uh, Monday I'll have had a week off. Alistair King's watching Dinky Do a blast from the past, says Louise Kerr. Yeah, absolutely, Louise, you are indeed. Lovely to have you with us. Um, all right, Scotty, says Christine Garvin. Dinky Do, Christine. Good morning, Dinky Do, Scotty, says Alistair King. Wonderful, Alistair. I thought I'd pop up, uh, they say you shouldn't encourage McClue, but I thought I'd pop up just to see how you all are. World's top broadcaster, first lord of the internet, saying dinky do to every single one of you. Here we go. Um, share to a page. We'll share to the big Scotty McClue page and just let everybody know that we are live right now. It is happening. Very funny, says Kevin Stewart. Not at all, Kevin. I thought you'd enjoy that. Witty. Yes, very witty. There we go. Excellent stuff. Now, um, I'll pop that up there. There we go. And we can just put live now. Join us. Wonderful. Live now. Okay, here we go. I'll put it in caps. Shouting. Live now. Shout it from the rooftops. Join us. Are you there? Good. Live now. Join us. Oh, that looks great. Right. Join us. Look at us. Has they come up there? Live now. Join us. Maybe it doesn't want to. Maybe it's saying that's all you're getting. Live now. Join us. Right. I'm going to post it anyway. It doesn't matter. And uh, we'll see if people come and join us. 
the excellent right. Shared, says Alistair King. Scotty, says getting isolated. These two people keep following me about the house, saying they're my wife and daughter. I know I had a guy on the other day, Peter, and he was saying with the football cancelled, he hadn't realised that his wife was made redundant from Wolves 10 years ago. So, very interesting. Wonderful Roddy Morris is watching. Dinky Doo Top Man. Hector Brown, all right, all right, Hector. Great to have you with us. Tell ten, tell ten, tell ten, says Alistair King. Kareem Zachariah, how's the dog today, Scotty? My two have had a wee walk. Oh, he's fabulous. Remarkable man. In his 14th year, you know. The dog's a remarkable man. We used to always call the dog the man, and we'd say, I'll go and get some dog food. Uh, what does the man eat? So there we are. Wonderful. Uh, I suppose that you could call the odd man a dog. And that used to be a bit of an insult, but to me, a huge compliment. Molly Scotty, hope you and the country are all keeping well. Well, David Turner, so many people are self-isolating. I thought we'll pop up and see who's about. I do a kind of crocodile dundee. Remember I'm with him. Somebody says, what are you doing? He said, it's like a phone call. Just seeing who's about. So this is like seeing who's about. There's the lovely Edith Thomas. Always good to hear you. Always good to hear from you, Edith, as well. And I say dinky-doo. And welcome to Scotty McClue. Morning, McClue. Yes, live. Uh, now, guys, can everybody share to every possible group, friend, everything they've got, what kind of dog have you got, says Gordon Robinson. Now, Gordon Robinson, you tuned in yesterday. You should have been able to see him. Lovely, lovely wee sporting Labrador in his 14th year. My wife doesn't like me at the moment. Her boyfriend can't come round till it's over. <laughs> Can I just have a toast to our wives and lovers? May they never meet. Uh, why are Facebook censoring posts with conspiracy videos? says George Ryan. I don't know if they are, George. There we are. Have you been putting conspiracy videos up? Gregor Beard's watching. Scotty, tell the numpties it wasn't a bluebell. Oh, yes. Now, guys, those of you that are on my Facebook page, I've posted a picture of a wee flower, a real sturdy wee guy that comes up every year, hail, rain, shine, coronavirus, anything. Up pops this lovely wee flower. Now, it looks a wee bit like a bluebell because it's got some blue bells in its flower. But um, a lot of people just went, bluebell. It's not a bluebell. Apparently, it could be a hyacinth. Or I wondered about a violet. Do tell. So there we are. So Howard Thompson, you're quite right. The numpties are suitably told, suitably chastised verbally. Uh, lol, Derek, says Kevin Stewart. What have we got here? Oh, uh, he looks so young. He's like a puppy from yesterday's pop-up. Kareem, that's exactly what he's like. He's like a puppy. You know, wonderful wee guy. And he's had a wee stroke. Well, he's had an FCE, which is a fibro um, cartilaginous embolism. But we call it a wee stroke because it's easier than explaining to people what it is. Um, I miss that bit, I think, says Gordon Robertson. Gordon, you of all people should know you never miss a moment of Scotty McClue. You miss a second of Scotty McClue, you miss a moment of life. All right, so there we are. Janice Waldoon, good morning, Scotty. Morning, Janice. When the government decided to leave open essential businesses only, why have they closed divorce lawyers? Point, Peter. Are the divorce lawyers closed? I don't know. Um, the volcano project's going well with Junior. He's made the Seven Sisters Volcano, Scotty. With a cracking landscape, more pics today when it's painted and another live of it erupting. Oh, my goodness, it'll be like something out of Thunderbirds. Alistair King. Hi, Thomas, says Howard Thompson, Thomas B. Wilson. First time listening, great show. Top man, Thomas B. Wilson, I thank you. Janice Muldoon, Kenny Gray is watching. Can we all share? Guys, we need to keep sharing all the time. Otherwise, there's no point. 
right? You've got to share and share and share. And don't do any of this, oh, I'm not sharing that. Get sharing, go, are you watching Scotty McClue right now? Dinky do. 5,000 of you joined me yesterday. And does your flower just come up once a year? Says Kevin Stewart, very personal question. Um, yes, yes, once a year, Kev. So once a year flower. Wonderful Danny Jones watching. Dinky do, Danny, lovely to have you with us. My wife ran off with the next door neighbor. Boy, I miss him already. <laughs> Very good. Good morning, Scotty. Stay safe, says Joe McSwiggan. Joe McSwiggan, you too, la. Very important. Do you say hello to Tony and Rosie Max, says Alan Hall. I will, Alan. Um, I'm so sorry, Scotty McClure, about your dog. Dogs are so loving and loyal. Better than humans. Um, no, Kareem, don't you worry. He's a great wee guy. He's had this for about 11 years. And... Um, he just gets on with it. He's got a bit of a walks a bit Douglas Bader, um, you know, but wonderful, you know, and so was Douglas Bader. Terrific man. So there we go. Now, I'm going to do some sharing. Share. So there we are. What am I sharing to now? Um, I'll share to my story. That will also let people know that we are on big style. So there you go. And if you can all tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, say Scotty McClure's popped up live on Facebook. I'm watching him right now. People go, away. You know, Ian McDougall's watching. Dinky do, Ian. Uh, don't get up, though, if you can watch me from your bed. Say good morning to Fred Walton, says Edith Thomas. I will, Edith. I like when you and Fred banter a bit on there. And Fred, of course, was saying that people could take anything except his toilet roll. The wonderful Shujat Ali, one of our top businessmen, is watching right now. Dinky do, Shujat. Lovely to have you with us. Steve Wilkie. Excellent, Steve. Dinky do. Um, come and join us as soon as you possibly can. And all of you, as I say, tell 10 to tell 10. I'll just uh, put up again that Scotty McClure is live. Share in public. Oh, the public. Oh, my goodness me. People will start to find out. They'll start to know. They'll say, McClure's on. Wonderful. Steve Wilkie's watching. Dinky do, Steve. Uh, shared to a coronavirus group, Scotty. Good, Alistair. That'll let them come on. Um, I take it that's a group to try and counter the old coronavirus. What do you think of poor old Prince Charles? Oh, my goodness me. God bless the Prince of Wales, I say. Uh, so there we go. And, um, oh, there's terrific things happening now. Guys, I mean, just a little bit of housekeeping. I have at the moment in my possession a massive queue of people wanting to befriend me on Facebook, which is lovely. I am very, very flattered. But it's such a long queue. I think I've got it down to 600. If you can, uh, follow me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. That would be great. Uh, what have we got? This is public service broadcasting at its best. Thank you, Gordon Richardson. Gordon Robertson, I should say. I've just had somebody called Richardson on, getting confused now, you know, on each thing. But yes, thank you, Gordon. It is public service broadcasting at its best. Not because I'm doing it, but this is what our public service broadcaster should be doing. And I did put it to them. I put it to the commercial broadcaster and... Um, it was some commissioner guy, and he went, I think it's got to be a no, Scotty. But he couldn't say why. And I was talking to a, a, a gentleman the other night who said he wouldn't know why. You know, these guys are just taking a chance. They wouldn't know what works, what's good entertainment. I should probably be doing the commissioning editor's job, but uh, I'm too maxed, to be honest with you. Dinky do, Edith Thomas, says Fred Walton. Ian McDougall, just woke up wondering why the Muppet Show's on at this time in the morning. Yep, so you can watch both, Ian. You can watch the Muppets, and you can watch Scotty McClue. Where would we get the Muppets? Uh, well, don't tell us just now in case everybody pushes off. Morning, Scotty. Hope you're well, pal, says John Carroll. There we are. What might have happened, Ian, is you woke up and you caught yourself in the mirror. 
<laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So it's a possibility. Uh, Dinky Doo, Mavis Grande, says Fred Walton. Fred is using the Scotty McClue Live pop up to catch up with old friends he hasn't seen for years. Isn't that lovely? Uh, Judith Hardest is watching. Hi, Judith, Dinky Doo. Dinky Doo, Scotty McClue, and four kisses. Mwah, Judith. Lovely to hear from you. Is that man of yours up yet? Because I know he's an awful one for his bed. So there you are. So uh, tell him it's time he was up. What is the time? It's about uh, quarter past ten. So he should be up by now. Uh, do you think we should start a GoFundMe to support the NHS staff in this time of need? Show our appreciation, Scotty, and split it between the hospitals. Yes, but, Alistair, as much and all as I love the charity thing for the NHS, the government needs to pile masses of money into the NHS because they took it out of it in the first place. Point? Anybody agree with McClure? Uh, so there you are. I've got you on both my iPad and iPhone simultaneously on the basis that it's not possible to get too much of Scotty McClure. Gordon Robertson, you say the nicest things. Now listen, does anybody watch this on the telly? Let me know. Uh, he's always up early. Uh, sexy Scotty, says Judith Hardesty. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Stuart Bailey, dinky do. Alistair King, I agree. Good, Alistair, but you don't, please don't let think for one second that, um, that your idea was not genius. It's just that we need to be holding the government to account. A lot of people are saying they were late with a lot of stuff for the coronavirus and that the NHS is really struggling. So it's had to rely on charity and volunteers and, um, converting other buildings into hospitals and all that sort of stuff because it was underfunded. Uh, Susan Forrest, Dinky, do good morning. This would help to pay for travel and meals to keep them going. Ah, now I see where you're coming from there, Alistair. I thought you were thinking and actually just paying for like a new hospital or something. But if it's to help the staff, then, and also I would say to any of the greedy, greedy Panic buyers, leave a lot of fruit and veg for the NHS people who are coming on after their shift. That poor nurse, she was in floods last week. She said, how can I stay healthy? She'd just come off a, it was a 40-hour shift and a 48-hour shift. So there we are. But yes, very good idea, Alistair King. Excellent stuff. If you've just joined us, folks, and you're wondering what on earth's going on, you're watching Scotty McClure, the first lord of the internet, the world's top broadcaster, and the world's most humble man. Here we are live, just for you, saying dinky-doo in the morning. Morning, McClure. Everybody get sherry. Uh, I've also got a Skype. If you're a very trusted person, you can come on. Um, told Rod hard to stay to put his PC on so you can wave to him. Says Judith. Absolutely, Judith. Rod Halsey, guys, was my first wizard of the big switchboard as a top man. What do you think of a Majesty using an old fashioned phone to phone Boris? I think people don't understand how the state and the monarchy works. That's why you get these half witted idiots with chips on their shoulder slagging off the Queen slagging off the Prince of Wales, all that sort of thing. They're virtually self-financing. It's a wonderful, wonderful setup. They're the curators. The Queen is the curator of the crown. Doesn't matter what your creed or your background is. It's our royal family. It's a Scottish institution from 1603. But Scotland has had a monarchy for 2,347 years. So some half-witted idiot living in total ignorance should not cheek up to the Queen or to the Prince of Wales. So there you are. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Susan. Mwah. Lovely to hear from you. And last, car parking free for the NHS staff. It should always have been free. It's a nonsense. I was visiting a friend at a hospital recently. 
and uh, I had to go and look for a parking space. And uh, when I got into this car park, I saw they charged an absolute fortune for your car to go and visit an old friend of mine who was uh, not far from the end. And I went up the side streets to see if there was anywhere. And they were all double red lined, no parking here. And the car parks were NHS staff only. Huge numbers of car parks away round the back of the hospital. All the streets round about the hospital that you would have parked in. So they'd obviously done a deal with the council. Shocking. <coughs> now, good morning, pal, says Thomas Hamilton. Peter says, Scotty, um, what's Peter saying? Hang on. You're all coming on here. The Queen would be giving Boris a telling off. Bless her. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, the Prime Minister needs a telling off from the Queen. Remember, Her Majesty can warn. Warn. Very interesting. Do take care, Scotty. Stay safe, says the wonderful Alan Hall. I will, Alan. Thank you. Scotty, the government statement about exercising for one hour a day made me panic because I thought it was compulsory. <laughs> well, I've been doing a lot of things. I mean, I walked um, here to uh, to the studio, you know, from uh, from my bedroom. So I thought that was rather good at McClue Tower. So a bit of exercise there. I uh, What else have I done this morning? I wound my watch. So there we go. Wonderful. Um, let's remind everybody to applause. Outside their home at 8 o'clock tonight. Say thank you to all kidders, says Fred Walton. Good for you, Fred. We like it. Uh, the monarch is a stupid idea, says Ian McDougall. No, Ian McDougall. Saying that is a stupid idea. The monarchy is a superb idea because we have something that is the envy of every country in the world. We have our head of state who has three crowns. She can wear three crowns. She probably wear a lot more because I think there's a number of crowns. Uh, Scotty, what do you think of this? Keep your distance, get a dog and an extended lead that Judith had to see. Yes, the only thing is these extended leads are not terribly good for the dog, to be honest, because the dog can think it's free, take a run and uh, yank its neck when the extended lead runs out. Ricky Martin's watching. Didn't you do, Ricky? All this family isolating is keeping me puffed out, says Howard Thompson. Aye, we're all well puffed out. Uh, Gordon Robertson says, have you ever thought of going into politics? You could take, talk some sense into the councillors, MPs and MSPs. Gordon Robertson, if I had a pound for every time I'd been invited to go into politics, I would be a very wealthy man indeed. And the thing is, I'm pretty maxed at the moment, but I can remember having a conversation uh, with a guy, and uh, a very senior guy, and... Uh, he said, uh, you should stand for that by-election, by the way. Scotty McClure running up and doing the stairs, knocking the doors, you know. And um, I said, right, I'll, I'll have a think about it. And he went, will you? Will you think about it? I said, yes. And I went off the phone, and about ooh, two, two minutes later, maybe, a national newspaper rang me and said, Scotty, we've heard through the grapevine you might consider standing as an MP. I said, well, I just, I said, I, I think I know where this has come from. They said, well, obviously, we can't tell you our sources. And they said, um, if you're going to do it, uh, let us know, give us give us an exclusive on it. And um, they said, but if you are going to do it, can you make sure you're serious? I said, and why do you say that? And they said, because there's a pretty good chance you'll get in. And that's coming from the editor of a national newspaper, Scotty McClue, there's a pretty good chance you'll get in. What about that? So there you go. Uh, but if the right invitation comes, I would rather have run the broadcasting for Scotland. You know, I was heavily tipped to run Scottish broadcasting had we gone ahead with independence in 2014. John Jones, thank you do. 
Scotty, not lifting the dog today because that's full body workout. You should have a day rest. Have a day off. Um, full body work. Listen, just getting about is a full body workout for me. So there you go. <laughs> a big muscle man. Ah, wonderful. Pumping bread. Um, we need more help for the self-employed, says Kevin Stewart. I would agree, Kevin. Yes, I think there needs to be a lot more of that. Right, can everybody share? We're getting lax. And can you follow me on Facebook? Because yesterday I had people going, oh, I never knew it was on. I would have watched that. You know, you can take a horse to the water, can't you? Alistair King, you can go in your garden just to uh, just have no contact with people. I spend the morning in the garage doing bits to my van. I very much doubt the van will have the coronavirus, Alistair. Uh, good job you said, uh, said uh, Judith Hardesty. Yes. How are you doing, Scotty? Says Ricky Martin. A dinky do, Ricky. Nice to hear from you. Now, Ricky is, um, now, how can I say, a medium? Is that right, Ricky? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a large. In fact, I'm a, an XX large. But um, Ricky is a medium. And uh, he will be able to tell us a lot of things. So there we are, top man. Jim Page. Uh, Dinky-doo, lovely to have you with us. Um, hi, Ricky, says Judith. Uh, Scotty McClure becomes the MSP. Uh, for his strength, for sure, you have my vote, says Kareem Zachariah. I think they have an incumbent at the moment, Kareem. I know they have an incumbent at the moment. Don't encourage Scotty to go into politics. It isn't his best asset. Fred Walton, you're talking to a master of politics. There we are. I just happen to be apolitical party-wise. There we are. I see the big picture. And I try to get you to as well. But it's a struggle. Um, if this virus is so contagious, are we made to believe why has Prince Charles' wife been given the all clear? She's with him 24-7. We don't know that. Uh, something's not right with the information. We are getting fed Scotty. Well, there we are. But we don't know the arrangement between Charles and Camilla, if they're with each other 24-7 or not. Nor is it our business. So there we go. Ben Hodgson, dinky-doo. Good to hear from you. Um, Judith, Scotty, how long do you think this will go on? My mum's 85 and feels so lonely. You need to set up the Skype, Jude. And, uh, you know... Have a good chat with her so that uh, she's getting a blather. I mean, here's Scotty McLeod talking to the world. Fantastic. Robert Pattles is watching. Dinky do, Robert. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right, everybody. Serious business. We need to start sharing. We're getting complacent here. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. So I'll share again to uh, public. There we go. Wonderful. Get watching. Absolutely. Robert Pattis is watching. Shared, says Judith. Good girl. What are your favourite uh, most annoying grammatical errors that other people make, says Gordon Robertson. Well, the most I've heard was a Geordie in a bar. And um, I was down in Newcastle and I was having a look round and this Geordie says to me, are you looking at us? And I said to him, I said, excuse me, how many grammatical errors can you make in one phrase? You know, I mean, there's no such word as use for a start. The plural of you is you. Um, so that, that irritates me. The other one, Gordon Robertson, while we're on the subject, is virtually every journalist and every news presenter on television at the moment. Public service broadcasters, commercial broadcasters, politicians, uh, radio broadcasters, right? You listen to the flagship programs, all of them. They need a serious talking to from their news editors. And it's because of this, and listen for it. The presenter does it. 
the journalist, the correspondent, the interviewee, the interviewer. Right, the lot. The politicians on their own, top politicians, the whole lot. When they're asked a question, they begin with well. So, broadcaster talking to a correspondent. Our correspondent, James McWackles at Westminster. James, has the Prime Minister had uh, a chat about this to anyone? Well, Mary. Right, now just either Mary or straight in. Right, I mean, I could sort these news. I'm a newscaster going back 36 years. I was reading the news on ITV. And according to some people, reading it, Superbly well. So there you are. And uh, people still to this day say, we don't have newscasters like you, Scotty. So there we are. I say, right, well, not much we can do about that. And um, everything is well. Now, I'm not totally immune from that. Somebody asks a question, I might come back with well occasionally. But what I'm saying, these people need to have the confidence and they should do, they're public servants. And when somebody says, here is the question, drop the well and come straight in. So, we're going over to James McWhackle at Westminster. James, has the Prime Minister said anything about this? The Prime Minister has said a few things. Drop the well. All right. And I know that the news editors of a lot of mainstream programs are watching right now. That's one of the reasons I'm telling them. But every single one of you, next time you're watching news, watch the presenter. Ask a question. Watch somebody say something back to the presenter. Well, this is what we thought. All it needs is this is what we thought. That's all it is. So straight in, drop the well at the start of it. We got two last night on our local public service broadcaster. Well, and then, well, thank you. Well, what's the weather doing? Well, it's going to be a bit chilly tomorrow morning. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Well, that's what's happening. Well, blow me. You know, so... All that sort of thing. So watch for the wells. I'll tell you, watch at lunchtime, guys. Watch a program this morning. Every question, every answer begins with well. Okay, W-E-L-L. -L. So there we are. Gordon, does that answer your question? So that was, uh, you know, quite interesting. So let me know if that gives you an answer, Gordon. Can we have more sharing, guys? I'm appalled at how tiny these figures are at the moment. We need them up 10 times, 10 times. Everyone on Facebook should be watching this right now because I can guarantee, and I'm not blowing any trumpets here, but I can guarantee there is nothing on your telly or your radio that will better a Scotty McClue, a Scotty McClue, call myself McClue there. That was the plural of McClue. That's two Scotty McClues would be McClue. Um, so, we'll better a Scotty McClue pop-up. All right? I can, and I can tell you that right now. And you know I'm right. Uh, what are their favorite errors, most annoying grammatical errors do people make? <laughs> right. Morning, Scotty. This is Rod Hardesty. Ah, oh, you're up, my boy. Excellent. Phil Symes watching DQ Film. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, a very warm welcome to all of you. If you've just joined us and you're wondering what on earth's going on, you're watching Scotty McClue live, broadcasting live, live streaming on Facebook Live just for you to see Dinky Doo. I happen to be the first lord of the internet and the world's top broadcaster, but hey, that's by the by at the moment. Don't worry about fancy titles. We're all in this together. The coronavirus. Yes, we will sort it out. Scotty, can't spell. So there we are. So there you are. You can't spell. Well, 
stick with us and I'll teach you to spell. So there we are. I hope you don't mean that he's sitting on his best asset. So there we are. <laughs> Cotton Robertson, you are a scream. Clever man. I used to work for a clear voyant but gave it up as I couldn't see any future in it. Says Kevin Stewart. Oh, very, very good, Kevin. Um, I remember um, a chap walked into the news agent and said, you have a copy of Psychic News. The news agent said, you tell me. All that stuff. I'm sure the mediums must get fed up with it. Um, Hi, hubby. Rod Halsey says, Judith, are you too self-isolating? Um, you can carry this virus and have no symptoms, but pass it on to people without knowing who it can affect badly. Absolutely, Alistair. A very fair point. Guys, I'm going to have to share some more of this, and so are you. Everybody, share, 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 and don't backslide out of it, all right? Uh, the wonderful Michael Purcell's watching. Dinky doo, Michael. I'd like to send love to everyone at this time. Stay safe and keep well. Three lovely hearts from Jem Page. Dinky doo, Jem. Thank you very much. The nation appreciates it. All nations appreciate it. Remember, people are watching in Canada and America right now. Uh, it says to the wife, what's that in the corner? I've never used it before. She says it's the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I actually sold my vacuum cleaner because um, it was just gathering dust, you know. So there we are. Right, where am I sharing here? This is big stuff. Oh, share to a group. Ah, I missed that one. I need to share to the group and let everybody know. And you can all do the same, guys. Um, did he not punch you, Scotty McClure? Says Kevin Stewart. No, no, I would have seen that coming. So there you are. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Who are we sharing to here? Global radio and television. I've got about five pages, guys. So uh, get yourselves on to them. I've got Dinky Doo. I've got Scotty-McClue.com, which is Scotty McClue's website, which has had over 10 million visitors. What about that? 10 million surfers. Uh, Jude says, hi, Terry Langan. Used to work with Hubby. Sandy McConnell. Hi, Scotty. Hello, Sandy. Dinky do and welcome to our morning pop-up. I hate journalists saying scheduled. It's scheduled. I agree with you. And somebody even tried it on the other night and went, the coronavirus. And I thought, no, no, no. Coronavirus. Don't try any of that. You see, I don't know if they still have it, but our public service broadcaster used to have a pronunciation unit. And I understood um, phonetics, a thing called phonetics. Now, with phonetics, you can't mispronounce anything. You just can't. So, uh, you know, if it's written down phonetically, which is what Henry Higgins and... Um, Professor, uh, who was the other old boy in uh, My Fair Lady, Colonel Pickering, they were phoneticians. So there you are. And you used to be able to ring this pronunciation unit and say, Hi, I've got a place in Kathmandu, and I wondered if you'd help me. Yes, of course. Yes. So do you want to just take a note? And you'd write it down phonetically, and then you would have a wee practice just before you read the news. Uh, so, yes, I know, says Judith. So there we are, Michael, you all. Um, maybe you've still to take his breakfast up, Jude. His egg soldiers. A lot of people on TV begin a sentence with so. And, of course, Ricky, you never begin a sentence with so. He says, it drives me nuts. My old teacher would have had the strap out. Do you remember the strap? I'll tell you what I saw recently. Uh, Danny Boyle's leaving. See if you can get a look at this. It's um, set in a Catholic school in Greenock in 1960. I think it was made around 1980 odd. I don't know if it was 81, 82, 83, 84, that kind of thing. And uh, super actors in it. Paul Young's in it. Wonderful actor. And. Um, it's just about life at school. And uh, 
there's there's a few beltings in it. I used to get it for talking and laughing, so I'm cured, you know. Obviously, you wouldn't hear me talking and laughing. Hi, Sonia Mitha, says Judith. Had an argument with somebody last week about money getting spent on Buckingham Palace. Why is the Queen not paying for it? People have to realise the palace belongs to the state. It's not the Queen's um, responsibility. If I didn't own my own home and it needed work done, damn sure the landlord would be paying for it. You're 100% Peter Connolly. Buckingham Palace was bought about 250 years ago for £5,000 from the Duke of Buckingham. To my knowledge, the poor old place, it's got about 463 rooms, I think, or something like that. And to my knowledge, the poor old place has only been done up about three times. So there you are. Um, when King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra took it over, Alexandra was needing a project, so Edward said, what woman would not um, would turn down the opportunity to redesign a palace? And they got rid of a lot of the old gas jets and things like that, got electric light in. So poor old Buckingham Palace, which is prime SW1 property, not suitable for homeless people before the socialists start screaming and shouting at us. Um, now, it's the administrative headquarters for the head of state. The head of state is the curator and custodian of the crown. The crown is our symbol of authority. It's above politics. So there you are. So um, there should be no mourning about paying for Buckingham Palace. And it's tiny money. We've spent billions and billions, squandered billions on Brexit to no avail. We're still in, thank goodness. There's a glimmer of hope. So there you go. You know, but, uh, you know, a piece of nonsense. And what people do, they use the Queen as a scapegoat. They use the royalty as a scapegoat, the crown as a scapegoat. Take their mind off other things. Tell me how much the White House has spent on it. Tell me how much the White House costs. Tell me how much the Kremlin costs. All right. Then come back to me on that one. Well, I'm going for a cuppa. Stay safe, dinky-doo. All right, Judith Dunning. Mwah! You stay safe. And uh, Scotty, these days it's not just well that starts the answer. So is frequently used to preface, preface, see what I just did there, uh, an answer from a correspondent. So there shouldn't be any so's. So, I just said so there. So there shouldn't be so's. So there shouldn't. And um, also, we need to drop the well because it's very, very irritating. And if they all drop the well, news editors take note, and I know you're watching, they would get, because uh, so I can see your names come up, they would get, um, but I wouldn't be so base as to say, uh, they would get uh, another story in, right? And I know that again, what we used to do, the fluffier stories at the end of the news, if you had a timing problem, because when I worked for commercial television, everything in ITV ran exactly to the second. So we didn't open up at 25 past nine in the morning. We opened up at 9.25, double O. And we didn't close down at one o'clock in the morning. We closed down at... Um, 12.59.30. All right, and then the clock would take it up to one, and that was it. Scotty, these days, James Robinson. Ah, what about the what then? What's it about then? What's the point of it then in this context? I don't know then. Um, I'll have to check that then. David Distance watching DD. Judith Artist, he sent me a lovely red rose. I thank you, Gordon Robertson. You're fair cheering me up. Ah, well, you're all cheering me up. Come on, more sharing, though. I want to see these figures up, right? They should be booming now. We should have billions tuning in. Hello, Scotty, it's tuning in. Do you like that? Billions clicking on. Hello, Scotty. It's great to see you another morning. Live stream. You're very nice and kind. Craig Downey, I thank you. You're very nice and kind to say so. It's appreciated. 
Yes, Sir Judith. Do you think the USA are taking the corona as serious, or will there be big problems soon like here? Well, Kareem Sakharaya, I don't think Mr. Trump's taking it terribly seriously. If uh, people in New York should uh, self-isolate, if um, he's talking about opening up again at Easter when we don't know what shape or form the virus will take. So I think world leaders need to take full responsibility. There shouldn't be any irresponsibility. They shouldn't be making outrageous statements to get press or anything like that, you know? Everyone should have a free home corona testing kit that would help. Well, it would help, Kareem. It would mean that you would know if you had it, or I believe there's one that you would know if you had had it. You can see if your antibodies are up. My friends are watching an amble. Can you say hi to amble? I can, Judith How to say amble with its little harbour. Now, is there not another place called, is it Crister or Craster? Right down there. Let me know. It's really beautiful as well. Uh, one reporter on a news channel starts every answer with so, says Fred Walton. So? And um, can you ask Mrs. McClure to make some clouty dumplings, Scotty? I can make it, but it tastes nothing like the stuff my gran made when she was alive. My mother used to do the most fantastic clouty dumplings. And she put silver threepennies wrapped in greaseproof paper in it so that you could get one. Problem is, if you swallowed one, the doctor would say, all right, just keep him comfortable and ring me if there's any change. <laughs> oh, see what I just did there. Uh, darling! Alistair King would like you to put on a clouty dumpling. Yes. All right, then. There we are. I can tell she's doing a clouty dumpling because she comes down with one stocking on. Um, now, Morning, Scotty. With all this disinfecting and bleaching, I won't have to use toilet cleaner. My pee will do the job, says George Carmichael. Too much information, George, but thank you for that little home tip. Um, forgive me if I probably can't find it in my Mrs. Beaton. And uh, nobody can spell pronunciation. Yes, well, they have to pronounce it properly. Um, he's not in bed, says Judith. Is he not? Uh, I thought you were taking him up his egg, so just tell him to get up. Uh, Zee Kai Tang Dinky Do. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Zee Kai Tang. Down in Liverpool. Ah, uh, ah, I love the bones here. Um, Buckingham Palace, ascending the Bulldogs, Ian McDougall, you are the closest thing. That statement is a statement. If I didn't know you better, I would say it had come from a half-wit. Uh, because that's the worst thing you could ever do. If Buckingham Palace ever came in the market, the bids would be absolutely through the roof. So you would like to kill off a national asset which would deprive the poor of a national asset. Do you not realize if we sell off our national assets, our family silver, everybody's going to be poor? Let me tell you how it works, Mr. Smarty Pants McDougall. Nobody's got any money. Scotty's got a fiver. There's five people come and beg a pound of me. I have nothing. They go and spend their pound. They come back to me and say, Scotty, you gave us some money yesterday. You're a good socialist. Could you give us some more? And I say, I would if I could, but I have nothing left. I gave it all away yesterday. I sold my assets yesterday. I gave away my assets to the poor people who were needy. So I have nothing. You wouldn't have anything. You couldn't give me a wee cup of soup, could you, by the way, because I have nothing. Oh, no, no, no. We've spent our quid. We, we had to feed ourselves and our family. Right. So nothing for Scotty, no. 
And then everybody becomes Scotty. And nobody has anything. Now, I love the concept of socialism. But once you give away your assets, the game is up. Now, you think on Ian, try and process that. I know that your head's absolutely stuffed with a lot of lefty-wefty nonsense and all that stuff. But have a think about what is workable and what is practical. And trust me, if we hadn't had the crown and we hadn't had the royal family, the poverty in this country would be through the roof. We would be a tenth world country. That's why we're the envy of the world. Okay. Uh, fit like Maloon, says Graham Broadley. Faber Dean. Fit like Graham Fujadu, so you are right. No, this is McQueen here. This is Maloon here. And we're all self-isolating. Because uh, what do you want in the virus? Fred, dinky do. The money spent in the Queen's the best value for money of all the money we spend. Fred Walton, I never thought I would agree a hundred percent with you, but I do. Woo! This is a street party. This is street party stuff, Fred Walton. You're absolutely a hundred percent correct. The maximum we spend in the Queen is between 50 and 60p. The royal family are self-financing. The Queen does all her stuff, her office, all paid for from the Duchy of Lancaster, which is superbly set up by brilliant accountants to pay for our monarchy. Genius. The Prince of Wales, the heir to the throne. He is um, the Duchy of Cornwall. Sorts his stuff out. Now, the royal family are big employers, you know, so... Let's just steady on. So there you are. So Ian, I hope you're learning a few things here. Time you heard a few home truths. And to ask us, Scotty, my daughter's Netflix and her TV's not working. I've been summoned to fix it. Keep up the good work, Scotty. Peter Curley, that can wait. Never, ever miss a moment of Scotty McClure. You miss a moment of life. Oh, wonderful stuff. Kevin Stewart, the past, the present, the future. Walked into a bar. It was tense. The Queen, the Pope, and the President of the United States walked into a bar, and the barman said, Is this some kind of joke? I see what I just did there. I know they didn't. It was a joke. Craston is 10 miles north of Amble, says Rod. Have you ever been Rod? Is it very swish? That was a good one, Scotty. Lol. Uh, so there we are, David John Carpenter, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you. Fantastic. There we go. And um, there we go. Excellent. Just dealing with some stuff that's come up. Uh, I'd like to open Buckingham Palace to the poor and the homeless. It would send them over the edge. If you go and take a look round Buckingham Palace, a homeless person wouldn't know what to do because, um, as I say, the building is 250 years old and um, it would stress them, so they would need serious help. None of the rooms would be suitable, um, mainly cornice and mirror and all that stuff. Uh, hi, Scotty, and also the plumbing, remember, isn't suitable. The biggest country house in Europe which is up in Yorkshire, I used to stay beside it, didn't have, it's got, there's a calendar house, 365 rooms, and it had one flush toilet for the Earl's use in 1903. One flush toilet to serve 365 rooms, so it was worse than the Garbles. They at least had one toilet per close, if it was working. Hi, Scotty. How many times do you wash your hands a day? And if you could have any colour, what colour? And if you could be of any colour, what colour would you be? How very, very interesting, John Pollock. Yes. I think I would like to try all colours. A person of colour, yes. Why not? 
see what it's like, King for a day. Uh, a bit off subject, aren't we? Uh, so there we are, says James Fender. Uh, no, James, no problem at all. You're absolutely on subject. Good man. Well done. Um, was the QEU, Queen Elizabeth University Hospital supposed to cost 60 million? Now the cost they're heading towards 180 million. The NHS ought to be more responsible with our money, says George Carmichael. I don't really think it'll be the NHS that are buying the hospital. It will be a department buying the hospital for the NHS, I would have thought. Morning, says the wonderful Louise Sullivan. Good morning, Louise, dinky dear. And a very warm welcome to Scotty McClure. Scotty, you just said try and process that. Deary me, you ought to have said try to process that. No, I would like him to process it in addition to what else I said. So there you are. But uh, yes, you can try to pro. You could to process it, but you could uh, process it also. Uh, Tracy Curry was watching. Dinky do top lady, top broadcaster. Fred Walton, why does anyone need Netflix when Scotty's on Facebook? A very, very good question, Fred Walton. Absolutely well asked, I would say. Um, that's Junior Painty's project while watching Scotty. Junior, dinky-doo. Tell your dad dinky-doo. He's a marvellous teacher. And dinky-doo to you, Junior. Make a fine job of that painting. What do you polish that nose with? It's like a mirror. The sign of health, Ryan, you see. The dog and I share a shiny nose. Wonderful. So there we are. Separate noses, but we share the shine. Because I am basically um, Labrador. Uh, been to Craster many times. Dunsterbra Castle is near a very old ruin. I know that friends of mine were filming in Caster once. Said it was absolutely gorgeous. Are you Scotty McClure that used to do the talk show on Hallam FM? I am Lee Marsden. There is only one Scotty McClure. Never, ever forget that. So there you are. Yes, a fine radio station. Loved you guys. So there we go. Excellent stuff. Now then, who have we got here? Who have we got here? Scotty, can you recommend a good nose polish, son? Well, son, um, I uh, have never really had a, a little bit of soap and water, not too much soap, more water, and then a good dry, a nice dab dry, and uh, you'll get that healthy nose. If this was television, I would have popped a little powder on it, a little bit of powder. If you don't mind me asking, Scotty McClure, what are your plans for the rest of the day? Kareem Zachariah. I am absolutely maxed, although I am self-isolating. And uh, what I shall do, I have administrative stuff that I deal with, huge, absolutely huge. I have um, obviously got social media stuff I deal with. I've got technology I deal with and uh, all that sort of stuff. I have a couple of phone calls to make that are very important to very important people. You'd be amazed who I talk to. And um, I also do a lot of reading. And if this goes on and on and on, I shall polish up my piano play so I can manage a full concerto. I don't know that I'll get to the Rach 3 or anything like that, but I shall polish up my piano playing. And as if that's not enough, and I have so many books to read. I'm rereading about the gunpowder plot of 1605. Very interesting. Do you know that that gunpowder would never have gone off anyway? Because apparently it was degraded. It's quite badly degraded. So uh, the whole thing wouldn't have come to fruition anyway. And if I remember right to this day, they um, have the beef eaters go and patrol the basement of the house. Um, I don't know how often, if it's just on, uh, if it's just on um, 
Guy Fawkes Day on Bonfire Night, but they go and check the basements. So there you are. You said dinky-doo to you, Scotty. Dinky-doo, young Alistair. Welcome. Um, I'm here for the sandwiches, says Tim. Excellent, Tim. You tuck in, my boy. Uh, Gordon Stilling's watching. You'll have to keep your distance up, and we'll leave the sandwiches outside, and you can gobble them up. Gordon Stilling, about time you were up. Uh, still here whilst fixing Netflix. It's not for me. It's for my six-year-old. It can't touch a good Scotty pop-up. Well, I mean, a six-year-old can come and join us here. You know, where Scotty McClue is a family. Gordon Robertson. Wonderful stuff. Here we are. The wonderful Gordon Roddick has just joined us. Welcome, welcome, Gordon. Lovely to have you with us. I'm just realising we're just about out of time. My goodness me, I shall have to dash. Now, if you can all share this, um, Gordon's going to be calling his head fund, his hedge, sorry, your hedge fund manager. Yes, I have a very small hedge fund, but it's enough to get it trimmed once a year, which is fine for beach. Um, I'd like if you played the piano, uh, on a pop-up sometime. I might give you a wee, a wee rendition, Kareem. We might finish off with a tune on the box. What polish do you use to get better at piano playing, Scotty? Oh, just a wee squish. Lovely wood, the piano, lovely wood. Uh, Netflix, says Dylan, absolutely Dylan, no problem at all. There we are. Scotty, Please stop the go and try and, you know, find it's too not and um, go and do that. No, you would you could go and do something and you could go and stop doing something. Go and stop that. So there we are. Go and stop. Do you see what I just did there? Stop, go. Um, Gordon Robertson, very good. Our resident grammarian. We like that. So there we are. Now, I'm going to have to push off, guys. I'll sing you the goodbye song. I remember you from your days in Hallam FM. This is the wonderful John Crossland. Dinky do, John. Tell 10 to tell 10. Guys, get this shared big style, okay? Jude's got out of bed. I've been up since 7 a.m. What are you doing up since 7 a.m.? For goodness sake, Rod. There you are. Are you still doing the paper round? Uh, she does join me, Scotty. She knows your voice and shouts, Mummy, Daddy's watching Scotty again. <laughs> right, off I jolly well go. Um, how many pop-ups can you have? All the dropped bums and Barnsley. You're quite right, John Crossland. What time does Scotty finish? There we are. Excellent stuff. Now, I have to finish now. Time is up. Time flies and you're having fun. Right. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. A vita zain, au revoir, and a cheery oh. Follow me on Facebook, my loves. Catch up with you all again soon. This is Scotty McClue saying to every single one of you, dinky-doo.